I am 24 years old and have four siblings. A four-year-old sister, a 13-year-old sister, and a 19-year-old sister. Let's call her Emmy. They have been living with me for five years. Our mother is mentally unstable, and I didn't even know about the existence of my youngest sister until she was two years old. A family member expressed concern for her. This gives you an idea of how unstable my mom is. Emmy went to college in the fall. Financial aid covered a significant fee, and I had to cover about $6,000 after that. It didn't seem too bad considering the cost of university. I also agreed to give her $50 a month to support herself. I did this because I didn't want her to take out any loans, as I didn't have the opportunity to go to college myself. I have been working since a young age and had to take care of my siblings, so maintaining a job and attending college was impossible. A few days ago, Emmy called me and asked for $100 to go out with her friend. I told her I didn't have it. She got upset and said that the money I had given her was only enough for her sanitary supplies, and she could barely afford to eat out, despite having a meal plan and a dorm. I told her for the fifth time to get a job. Guess what she said after that? She told me I wanted to ruin her college experience because I am uneducated and jealous of her for not getting the chance to go to college myself. We argued for a while. She even asked me what I was spending my money on, and I asked her if she knew how much it cost to take care of our youngest sister. She said she was in school half the day, but I still had to pay an outrageous amount for her daycare. Public school is free, but daycare is not. In order for me to work, I have to pay a lot to leave her in daycare. Emmy seems to be unaware of this, and acts like taking care of all three of them is financially easy. This isn't the first time she has been selfish either. I asked her to apply to be a resident advisor, RA, so she could get free housing, but she didn't even try to apply. I wouldn't have been upset if she got rejected, but she didn't even submit an application. After arguing with her, I gave in and agreed with her. I told her I was so jealous that I would never pay for her tuition again. When she comes home, she can get a summer job to support herself or take out a loan. I don't understand why I am working so hard and exhausting myself for someone who doesn't appreciate it. I told her I wasn't joking and was dead serious. Then I hung up. She sent me some apologies afterward. Am I being a jerk for cutting her off financially? Though she will still have a place to stay in my home, or is she just being a typical teenager and am I being childish? P.S. I understand that taking in my siblings was my choice, but it wouldn't hurt to receive some gratitude for the amount of work I do for them. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. When I was in junior high, we had to do a budget. We were given a figure as our monthly income and a list of typical expenses. We had to find a place to rent from real advertisements, buy a car we could afford, make a shopping list, and more. It was eye-opening. Surely a young woman in college can learn the same lesson. It might be worth taking the time to show her what you earn, what you take home, and then show her the expenses, including the monthly expense of helping her with tuition and fun money, and how little extra money there is. She wants to know what you are spending your money on, so show her. Rent, utilities, daycare, food, insurance, transportation, and more. Maybe she will see how you are working and struggling to support people and could use the help of her getting a part-time job. Not the idiot. Comment two, not the idiot. First, I commend you for taking on your siblings because they are not your responsibility. Second, never allow someone to disrespect you. There is no amount of help that will make them respect you. Stop giving her money, even the dollar fifty. Third, let her feel exactly what a financially responsible adult feels. She can get loans and still come out better than most. She can get a job and take care of her own needs. Fourth, it is time for her to take responsibility for herself and her finances. She is responsible for her college experience. Fifth, do not allow her to speak to you like a sister, but expect you to finance her like a parent. Cut the cord. Her attitude is entitled and disrespectful. It's time for you to take back your power and do things to better your life. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading my update. It's been a week since I last posted, and a lot has happened. After our argument, Emmy didn't talk to me for a few days. I thought she was just cooling off, but then I got a call from her college's financial aid office. They told me that Emmy had come to them, claiming that I was no longer able to support her financially. She had applied for additional loans and grants without my knowledge. 
I was shocked and hurt that she would go behind my back like that. I called her immediately, demanding an explanation. She said she was just trying to take some of the burden off me, but I knew that wasn't the whole truth. After some pressing, she finally admitted that she had been talking to our mom. It turns out that our mom had been filling Emmy's head with all sorts of lies about me. She told Emmy that I was just using the money for myself and that I didn't really care about her education. Emmy, being young and impressionable, had believed her. I was furious. I couldn't believe that our mom would stoop so low as to turn Emmy against me. I had always tried to shield my siblings from her instability, but it seemed like she had found a way to get to them anyway. I sat Emmy down and had a long talk with her. I explained how much I had sacrificed to take care of her and our other siblings. I told her about all the times I had gone without so that they could have what they needed. I even showed her my bank statements to prove that every penny I had was going towards their care. Emmy was in tears by the end of it. She apologized profusely and said she had no idea how much I had been doing for them. She promised to never listen to our mom's lies again and to always come to me first if she had any concerns. But the damage had already been done. Emmy had taken out loans that I now had to figure out how to pay back. I was already stretched thin financially and this added burden was almost too much to bear. To make matters worse, I found out that our mom had been trying to get custody of our youngest sister. She had been telling people that I was an unfit guardian and that she was the only one who could properly care for her. I was at my wit's end. I didn't know how I was going to handle all of this on my own. But then I remembered something from my childhood. When I was younger, my grandma used to tell me stories about her life. She had been through a lot of hardships, but she always found a way to persevere. One story in particular stuck with me. She told me about a time when she was a young mother with three kids to feed. Her husband had just lost his job and they were struggling to make ends meet. She didn't know how they were going to survive. But then she remembered something her own mother had told her. When life gets tough, you have to get tougher. So that's what she did. She picked herself up and found a way to provide for her family, no matter what it took. I realized that I needed to do the same thing. I couldn't let my mom's lies or Emmy's mistakes bring me down. I had to be strong for my siblings and find a way to make things work. So that's what I'm doing. I'm picking up extra shifts at work and looking for ways to cut back on expenses. It's not easy, but I know I can do it. I have to, for the sake of my family. As for Emmy, she's learning her lesson the hard way. She's taking on more responsibility at school and looking for ways to contribute financially. It's a tough road ahead, but I know she'll come out stronger in the end. And our mom? Well, I'm not going to let her win. I'm going to fight for custody of our youngest sister with everything I have. She deserves a stable and loving home, and I'm going to make sure she gets it. So that's where things stand now. It's been a tough week, but I'm not giving up. I'll keep pushing forward no matter what life throws my way. Thanks for reading and for all your support. It means the world to me. Am I the idiot for refusing therapy and distancing myself from my parents who only see my sister's needs? I'm a 16-year-old male, and I consider myself a glass child. My sister, who is 15 years old and female, was born with chronic health problems and a physical disability. Her life hasn't been easy, and she's often in pain and limited in what she can do. This meant that our parents were always making special time for her, and doing what they could to let her enjoy being a kid. However, it also meant that my parents weren't really there for me. They would take her places and leave me behind at home or with someone else in the family. I never got the same amount of attention from them. They even completely forgot two of my birthdays because they were so focused on taking my sister to concerts that she wanted to attend. They didn't even get me a small gift, like a $5 gift card, which they had done a few times before when money wasn't as tight. When I was younger, I spent most of my time with my paternal grandparents. Unfortunately, my grandma passed away three years ago, and my grandpa now lives in a nursing home in another city. This made it even more difficult for me. The infection 19 pandemic was especially lonely for me because I felt like an intruder in my own family. I felt like my parents and sister were their own unit, and I was just someone living with them. In April 2020, my sister had a temper tantrum and broke some of my gaming equipment, but my parents didn't even acknowledge it or replace the items. They only focused on how upset my sister was. A few months ago, I decided that I needed to talk to my parents about this to see if things could improve. 
they suggested that we all go to therapy together. During therapy, it was recommended that we spend more quality time together as a family, just like my parents did with my sister. So we started doing that once a week. However, for the rest of the week, my parents still focused primarily on my sister. Things only started to change when my sister got jealous and had a meltdown over my parents spending time with me. She accused them of preferring me over her. At that point, my parents asked me if I could be understanding and give it more time because my sister really needed them and couldn't handle sharing them. This made me angry and hurt, but I also felt defeated. I told my parents not to bother anymore because it was clear that their only child who matters to them is my sister. I said that I would remove myself from their lives as soon as I could. From that point on, my parents went back to focusing solely on my sister and I stopped caring. This led them to suggest that all four of us go to therapy again, but with a different therapist since the previous one would not be pleased with how they ignored the advice given. They told me that this was the only way to fix things now, I refused. They insisted that this was how we could work together as a family to fix our issues. However, I told them that it was too late. I didn't have them as parents for 15 years, and I couldn't be expected to be okay with that until my sister felt comfortable sharing them. I told them that they had made the choice of whose feelings mattered more, and just like always, they put my sister first. So I decided that I was done and that I didn't want to fix things. Since then, my parents have begged me multiple times and told me that they are willing to work on our relationship if I could be reasonable. Am I the jerk? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the jerk, but I do recommend you go to therapy for yourself to learn how to cope with this as you get older. You would be surprised by how much built-up resentment you have, that it is always great to get it off your chest and have someone to listen and guide you. Your parents made their choice, and if they cannot even spend one day with you out of the week because of your sister, then that is on them. Forcing you to do therapy together is unreasonable, especially since the number one thing they will advise is for them to spend one-on-one -on -one time with you, which has proven to be ineffective. Comment two, not the jerk. They made their bed and they can lie in it. I have never understood why parents with multiple children always treat one better than the other. My mother has three children and she does this and always makes one of us the new random golden child of the month year, and I hate it. So sorry you are going through this, man. Have you ever considered individual therapy just by yourself to process everything? Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading my update. It's been a month since I last shared my story, and a lot has happened since then. After refusing to go to therapy with my family, things got even worse at home. My parents kept trying to convince me to change my mind, but I stood my ground. I told them that I was tired of always being an afterthought, and that I needed some space to figure things out on my own. A couple of weeks ago, my sister had another meltdown. She accused me of being selfish and not caring about her feelings. She said that I was making everything about myself and that I didn't understand how hard her life was. I tried to explain to her that I had my own struggles too, but she wouldn't listen. She started throwing things around the room and screaming at the top of her lungs. My parents rushed in to calm her down, but this time, something different happened. Instead of just focusing on my sister, my dad turned to me and asked if I was okay. I was shocked. It was the first time in years that he had acknowledged my feelings during one of my sister's meltdowns. We ended up having a long conversation that night. My dad admitted that he and my mom had been so focused on my sister's needs that they had neglected mine. He apologized for not being there for me and for making me feel like I wasn't important. He said that he wanted to make things right and that he was willing to put in the work to rebuild our relationship. I was hesitant at first, but I could see that he was sincere. We started spending more time together, just the two of us. We went fishing, watched movies, and even started a little woodworking project together. It was awkward at first, but gradually we started to open up to each other. My mom also made an effort to connect with me. She started asking me about my day and my interests. She even took me out for a special lunch, just the two of us. It was the first time we had done something like that in years. As for my sister, things are still complicated. She's struggling to adjust to the changes in our family dynamic. She's used to being the center of attention, and she doesn't like sharing our parents with me. We've had a few more arguments, but my parents are trying to be more balanced in their approach. 
They've started setting boundaries with my sister and making sure that she understands that my needs are just as important as hers. They've also been encouraging her to be more independent and to find ways to cope with her feelings that don't involve lashing out at others. It hasn't been easy, but I can see that my parents are trying. They're not perfect, but they're making an effort to be better. And for the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm part of a family again. Looking back, I realized that my grandparents played a big role in shaping who I am today. They were always there for me when my parents weren't, and they taught me a lot about resilience and perseverance. I miss them both so much, but I know that they would be proud of me for standing up for myself and for giving my parents a chance to make things right. I know that we still have a long way to go, but I'm hopeful for the future. I'm learning to communicate my needs better, and my parents are learning to listen. We're all working together to create a more balanced and supportive family dynamic. So that's where things stand right now. It's been a tough journey, but I'm grateful for the progress we've made. I know that there will be more challenges ahead, but I feel more equipped to handle them now that I have my parents' support. Thanks for reading, everyone. I appreciate all of your kind words and encouragement. Am I the idiot for refusing to give up my great-grandmother's pendant to my dad's affair partner? Throwaway account. One, 35-year-old male, have a beautiful little girl named Liana, four-year-old female, with my wife, Tammy, 35-year-old female, who graciously supported my request to give our daughter a variation of my great-grandmother's name, Lena. My great-grandmother cared for me as a baby while my parents worked, but unfortunately passed away when I was seven years old. This deeply saddened me, and the only person I felt could truly understand my pain was my grandfather, my great-grandmother, Lena's son. We grieved for her together and have been best buddies ever since. My great-grandmother was very sick for a while, and towards the end of her life, she expressed that one of her regrets was never having a daughter to pass down a family pendant that was given to her by her own mother. I promised my great-grandmother that I would have a daughter, so that the pendant could be passed on, and she seemed genuinely happy about that. After she passed away, my grandfather received the pendant and told me that it would go to whichever daughter I had. We had a half-joke, half-serious understanding about it, which we openly talked about for years. Unfortunately, when I was 12 years old, my dad cheated on my mom and got the other woman pregnant. I was extremely angry at my dad because my mom was dealing with depression at the time, and he seemed indifferent. He ended up marrying his affair partner after their daughter, Jessica, 22-year-old female, was born. I promised my dad that I would ruin their wedding day if I was forced to attend, and when they tried to call my bluff, I put blue dye in the other woman's shampoo. This incident made it very clear that I would not be allowed back home until I apologized. However, I was stubborn and bitter, and the threat of having to pay a large sum in child support didn't change my mind. My mom got me into therapy which helped me process my anger. However, I kept my dad, the other woman, and their daughter at arm's length. When I was in college, my grandfather passed away, and in his will, he left me some money and the pendant, which I kept in a safety deposit box. I never talked about the pendant, and no one ever asked me about it. Fast forward to a couple of days ago when I showed Liana my great-grandmother's pendant, and she loved it. Tammy took a picture of Liana with the pendant and posted it on social media. Word got back to Jessica, and I guess my dad filled her in on the information. She is upset that she didn't receive the pendant. My dad's affair partner is calling me a thief, claiming that I knew I was wrong, which is why I hid the pendant, and demanding that I give it to Jessica, as she believes it rightfully belongs to her. I am refusing, as Jessica never even met my great-grandmother, never showed any interest in learning about her, never once asked about the pendant, and as far as I know, she has no legal claim to it as it was technically willed to me. Am I the jerk? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Well, if you were still the kid that put dye in the shampoo, I would say everyone is the jerk here, but I will trust you have grown since then. Gave them fair warning anyways. I would prefer to be called a thief, however inaccurate, willed to you, keep it, than a mistress or cheater, along with some other colorful turns of phrase. Not the jerk. How about you exercise that blocking feature and move on? Comment two, not the jerk. In his will, he left me some money and the pendant. Tell them to go pound sand. But I forever kept my dad, the other woman, and their daughter at arm's length. Why are you and your wife social media friends then? 
go block them. Now for the update. Thank you for all the comments on my last post. It's been pretty tough of a few days since then. The day after I posted, my dad showed up at my house unannounced. He demanded to talk to me about the pendant. I reluctantly let him in, not wanting to cause a scene in front of the neighbors. As soon as he was inside, he started yelling at me, saying that I had no right to keep the pendant from Jessica and that I was being selfish and vindictive. I tried to explain my side of things, how the pendant was always meant for my daughter and how much it meant to me to be able to pass it down to her. But my dad wasn't listening. He just kept going on about how I was punishing Jessica for something that wasn't her fault and how I needed to let go of the past. Things escalated quickly, and before I knew it, we were both shouting at each other. Tammy heard the commotion and came out to see what was going on. She tried to calm things down, but my dad was too worked up. He ended up storming out, slamming the door behind him. The next day, I got a call from a lawyer. Apparently, my dad and his wife had decided to take legal action to try to get the pendant. They were claiming that it was a family heirloom that rightfully belonged to Jessica as the eldest granddaughter. I was stunned. I couldn't believe they would actually take things this far. I immediately called my own lawyer to see what my options were. He said that since the pendant was specifically willed to me by my grandfather, I had a strong case. But he also warned me that legal battles like this could get messy and expensive. Over the next couple of days, things only got worse. My dad's wife started posting nasty things about me on social media, calling me a thief and a liar. Jessica even reached out to me directly, pleading with me to give her the pendant and saying that she had always dreamed of having something to remember our great-grandmother by. I have to admit, for a moment I wavered. I started to wonder if maybe I was being too stubborn, if maybe I should just give Jessica the pendant to keep the peace. But then I thought about my great-grandmother and the promise I made to her. I thought about how much it would mean to Liana to have that piece of our family history. In the end, I decided to stand my ground. I told my lawyer to do whatever it took to protect my rights to the pendant. I know it's not going to be easy, and that this could cause even more damage to my already strained relationship with my dad and his family, but I also know that I'm doing what I believe is right. As for the mistake I mentioned in the title, well, that happened yesterday. In the midst of all this drama, I accidentally let it slip to Liana that the pendant might be taken away. I didn't mean to worry her, but she overheard me talking to Tammy about it and got upset. I felt terrible seeing the look on her little face when she asked me if she was going to lose her special necklace. I quickly reassured her that I would never let that happen, but I could tell she was still anxious about it. I know I need to be more careful about what I say around her, especially with everything that's going on. The last thing I want is for her to be caught in the middle of all this family drama. Anyway, that's where things stand now. I'm trying to stay focused on what's important, my wife and daughter, and not let myself get too caught up in all the negativity. But it's not easy. I just hope that eventually we can find a way to move past all this and heal as a family. Thank you again for all your support and advice. It really means a lot to me during this difficult time. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.